Hey, how's it going guys? Chris here with another Battlefield 1 weapon guide. In today's video, I'm going to be checking out that Vetterly rifle, a gun that came along with the Russian DLC that has quite a lot of unique qualities that differentiates itself from the other, longer range weapons that the Scout class has to offer. So the Vetterly Vitali M1870-87 was a full shot repeating rifle chambered for the 10.35mm black powder cartridge. It was fed using some pretty funky looking Swiss style stripper clips made from fabricated steel and wood, which could be pressed vertically into the rifle's internal magazine, and once the last round catches under the cartridge retainer, the empty clip could then be pulled back out by a cord, attached to the wooden frame at the top of the charger, leaving the reloaded ammunition stored in the magazine ready to be used by the weapon. The rifle itself was actually a modified version of the single shot Italian Vetterli Model 1870, and with the inclusion of a magazine system, this allowed for more effective consecutive fire, which was something that the original single shot Italian version of the Vetterli rifle really needed, to increase its extremely low rate of fire. And so the M1870-87 variant gradually replaced the Model 1870 as time went on. This variant was eventually displaced from frontline service in 1891 by the newer Carcano rifle, though it was still used by rearline units, and at the dawn of the Great War, Quite a lot of them were converted to fire the same 6.5mm round used by the Carcano rifle, along with being modified to hold an additional two cartridges, and these versions would be known as the M1870-8715 variants. The original Vetterli rifle was created in 1869 by a Swiss weapons designer called Johann Friedrich Vetterli, and it was a very advanced piece of technology for its time, as muzzle-loaded guns were still the adopted standard combined with the fact that the Swiss Vetterli rifle utilised a similar sort of tubular magazine as the Winchester 1866, giving it a total ammo capacity of 11 rounds. Not long after it was initially made, the Italians decided to adopt their own modified version of the rifle, which met Italian army requirements, but this meant that the weapon had to be simplified and designed in a way to reduce costs, which also led to it being a less effective gun in the process, changing it from a repeating weapon into a much slower firing single shot rifle. As time went on, it became apparent that the Italian Vetterli rifles just weren't as good as the original Swiss ones, and it was soon realised that taking away that magazine was a bit of a dumb idea. So in 1887, Captain Vitali corrected this mistake, modified the rifle to hold four shots, and so lent his name to the newer variant too. And leading up to the late 1890s, pretty much all of the older single shot Vetterlis were updated and converted into these M1870-87 variants using Vitali's design. By the time of 1915, the Italians were a bit short of weapons to use during the war, and although the older Vetterli rifles were obsolete by this point, they were brought back out again and issued to newly formed regiments not expected to be in combat, though the old rifles were still sometimes used on the front lines when they were required to. Quite a lot of the Italian Vetterli rifles saw combat in Russia, with them being sent over in 1916, though because the Soviet Union got rid of all their old black powder and early smokeless rifles after the Russian Revolution, these guns would eventually end up in the hands of the Republicans during the Spanish Civil War in the late 1930s. There's two different variants of the Vetterli rifle which can be unlocked once you've got the In the Name of the Saar DLC, with the first one being the Infantry. This one's pretty easy to get hold of, as all you've got to do is get 15 kills of the M1903 Experimental, along with 20 Periscope Spot Assists. So just hop into an operations or conquest server and just keep spotting anyone that you see running around in the distance with that periscope, and hopefully your teammates will take them out for you, netting you those assists. The second variant, which is the Vesely Carbine, is a bit harder to get, as you'll be required to kill 50 players with the SMLE Mark III Carbine, and you'll also have to destroy a vehicle with a cable it, which might take a bit of time to do, with them only dealing a low amount of damage. You could fire at tanks and planes low on health to eventually destroy them, or just go for those stationary weapons and mortars, which should also count towards this task too. So anyway, it's time to go over the stats, and the Vetterli rifle is definitely one of the most interesting scout weapons as far as those stats are concerned. In a way, its damage graph is quite similar to the Martini Henry, as the gun's going to pack the most punch at those closer to medium ranges, but not so much over longer distances, as it's going to deal 90 damage up to the range of 10 meters, and from here, that damage will start to increase. Once your opponent lies beyond the 20 meter mark, then your bullets are going to be at their strongest, dealing 100 damage each. 
Uh, this sweet spot zone is going to last up to 50 meters, which is where the damage will begin to decline, dropping down to 70 at the distance of 110 meters and so on. We can see here that the Vesely rifle still isn't exactly a CQC cannon, as it's not usually going to kill anyone with full health instantly at point blank range, though it will be a more powerful weapon to use just beyond those closer proximities with its sweet spot zone beginning so early, which might make it a more practical choice for rushing objectives and getting a little bit closer to the action than you normally would with the other bolt action rifles. It's key to know that, unlike the Martini Henry, which can deal a higher damage value than the other scout rifles of 112, between 42 and 68 meters, allowing for a guaranteed one hit kill to the head, body or upper arms within that range, because the Vesely rifle functions like most of the others, dealing a maximum of 100 damage, this means that it's not always going to be quite as consistent, as your shot needs to land on either the head or upper body to secure the kill with one round though you'll still be able to take anybody down with a well-placed shot to the head, which is going to do the trick over all distances, dealing 126 damage at a minimum. Unfortunately for the Vesely rifle, because the actual span of the sweet spot zone is quite short, only lasting over 30 meters, this gives it the smallest sweet spot zone in the game. It's only a few meters shorter than the SMLE Mark III and the LaBelle, but with their one-hit kill zones being slightly larger, and beginning a little bit later too, this grants them with a more powerful shot slightly further away making them generally more reliable guns over the medium range span. The Vesely rifle only shoots at the speed of 47 RPM, which isn't exactly miles slower than a lot of the others, but still enough to make a difference when you need to take out several targets in quick succession, or if you need to land a follow up shot to secure the kill. The Gewehr M95, which is one of the fastest shooting weapons available for the Scout class, fires 43% faster than the Vesely, so in a head-to-head -head battle with another player, there's going to be a bit more pressure to land those bullets on target, as you're going to be in a more vulnerable position for longer, while cycling the bolt in between shots. You're not going to be quite as exposed as you would be when using the Martini Henry, which fires almost twice as slow as the Vesely, but because it's best suited for even closer ranges than the Martini, there's a further element of risk, and probably less room for error when engaging targets within the gun's optimal range. While we've established that the Vesely rifle isn't really a weapon designed for long distance takedowns and sniper battles, down to its early sweet spot zone and lower damage at range, another factor which heavily contributes to this matter is the fact that the gun's got the same low muzzle velocity as the Martini Henry, firing those rounds out at the sluggish speed of 440 meters per second, which is half of the bullet speed of the Gewehr 98, so you'll have to lead your target's movements more so, and accommodate for that low bullet travel speed in order to land your shots precisely, making it a fairly tricky weapon to use over longer ranges. Deploy time is also a little bit higher than most of the other rifles too, so you're not going to be able to swap it around quite as swiftly from the other weapons and gadgets. It's not a huge difference, but it just makes it a slightly less mobile choice, which could increase your vulnerability a bit if you get caught off guard. As far as the weapon's accuracy and recoil pattern goes, the Vesely isn't really any different to most of the other scout rifles, as it's going to share the same vertical value of 2 and horizontal value of 1, which is the typical sort of recoil pattern that the scout rifles generally seem to follow. The gun also has a similar amount of spread too, which basically means that standing still will provide you with the most accurate shot, allowing your bullet to go in the exact direction that you want it to. Though because the Vesely rifle doesn't have any long range optics, it can often be easy to forget this rule leading to a missed shot, especially with its bullet speed being so lazy too. Strafing around whilst firing with the Vesely rifle isn't going to be a very good idea, though the carbine variant will at least provide you with a little bit more wiggle room, as its aim down sight spread whilst moving is going to be halved over the infantry variant, along with it having a lower hip spread too. Not that you should really be running around firing from the hip, but it's still an extra bonus to have nevertheless, even if it's a bit of a pointless one. The carbine variant will grant you with an optical sight too, which should be handy for anyone who isn't a big fan of the Vetterly stock iron sights used on the infantry variant, though the infantry still shouldn't be tossed to one side just yet, as it does offer a few statistical bonuses over the carbine, with it being able to recover 50% quicker from recoil and hip spread, allowing you to reacquire a target and line up that follow up shot in less time. Now 
now straight away. We can clearly see that the Vetterli rifle, only having an ammo capacity of 4 rounds, is already going to be at a slight disadvantage when compared to the majority of the other scout weapons, most of which holding an extra cartridge per reload. This means that, despite being a rifle designed with a more gung-ho playstyle in mind, you're still going to have to be quite careful and accurate with those rounds if you want to utilise the weapon's power while staying alive at those closer to medium ranges. Despite having a fairly low amount of ammo to play around with though, you've still got three more bullets at your disposal than the Martini Henry, which effectively increases the fire rate of the weapon, with the Martini Henry being a single shot rifle. This means that a missed shot is going to be far less problematic, as you'll be given more of an opportunity to land another shot on target, with the Vesely rifle being a bit more forgiving. And because the Martini Henry plays out in a fairly similar way to the Vesely, being best designed for medium ranges, this puts you at an advantage within said ranges, when you need to land a follow-up shot and put down a weakened player without having to rely on your secondary weapon to finish the fight. When it comes to the gun's reload, the Vetterli's full clip reload is going to take 3.8 seconds to perform, which is roughly a similar sort of time to a lot of the other scout rifles full reloads. Though because you'll be getting one less round back than most of the others, this might seem like a bit of a drawback overall. Though an interesting thing to know about the Vetterli rifle is that you'll be able to perform a clip reload even if you've still got a round left over in the gun, which essentially helps to shorten its tactical reload a bit. This means that the maximum length of time it's going to take to reload the gun is only going to be 3.8 seconds, which is fairly short in comparison to other rifles, but with that said, it's still going to take almost the same time just to reload two bullets individually, clocking in at 3.74 seconds, so in a lot of cases you might as well just take advantage of that clip reload instead. But anyway, in conclusion, the Vesely Vitali M1870-87 is a very interesting scout weapon that plays out in a somewhat similar way to the Martini Henry, but having its own unique features to set itself apart, allowing for a bit more aggression closer to all the action. The rifle can hit pretty hard in some offensive encounters, with its sweet spot zone starting very early, and with it having the most power against opponents not too far away though it's not going to be the most reliable gun to use over longer ranges with that damage being lower and down to it having such a low muzzle velocity, which probably won't cause any huge problems at close, but might make it tricky to land shots on moving targets in the distance. Although the Vetterli rifle is designed to be used at shorter ranges, it's still not exactly going to be a surefire option to whip out in CQC, as if you want to kill in one shot, you'll still need to be at least 20 metres away from your opponent and land your shot on either their chest or head to take them out of the fight and so it's not going to perform quite as consistently as the Martini Henry at mid-ranges. The gun's also got the smallest sweet spot zone too, lasting only 30 metres, which means that there's less chance of your opponent being in it, though with the zone being fairly close by, it's probably going to be easier to judge whether or not they will be. Something else which is going to limit the weapon's overall effectiveness is the fact that the gun's got one of the slowest fire rates of the entire scout class and the combination of having a fairly sluggish rate of fire, along with a low ammo capacity, means that you'll be more pressured to land bullets accurately on target, as if you miss too many shots, the time it takes to kill your opponent is going to be increased by quite a lot, which can be a huge problem when you're not too far away from all the chaos up in the front lines within the Vetterli's effective range. Though the gun's reload mechanics aren't too bad, as you'll be able to perform a clip reload when there's a bullet still left over, shaving a bit of time over there, meaning you'll be able to get that ammo back at a fairly snappy rate when you're running low. Overall, the Vetterli rifle has a pretty slow kill time outside of those early mid-ranges, though it can be a brutal weapon to use when attacking or defending against advancing enemies within that sweet spot zone. It's definitely more of a risk-reward type gun that's going to benefit players who like to play the objective, though it can be a bit of a tricky rifle to do well with at times, with it having so many factors that somewhat limit its usability and reliability over most ranges. So that's it for another one guys, I hope you enjoyed the guide. Give me a thumbs up on your way out if you did, and be sure to subscribe to stay updated with all that fresh content coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in that next episode.